Okay, folks, it's uh, eight o'clock and uh, we got a lot of people coming in. I'll wait a one more minute. I've set my little timer, you know, uh, it's good for also working with chicken. You know, I mean, uh, and barbecue chicken. And in New York right now, we're, we're, we're losing it. The leaves are coming down, so my barbecue pit is covered up, you know. I mean, no more chicken for a while. Uh, get the leaves going and burn the house down or something. Uh, so I've set for 45 minutes, and I'm going to stay well within my time and uh, uh, try to show you a lot of different things that uh, maybe help to working with your situation that you're in right now. So um, I want to thank uh, Lori Bailey uh, so much uh, because she was so helpful in working with me and setting this up. It's really a pleasure to see that you guys are working with the Delaware State Music Day because it's sometimes it's so uh, frustrating now with what we have to do working online and back and forth and uh, be able to see some of our colleagues and to be able to talk music and some at least try to give you some ideas that you can move forward. Uh, I'm Fred Kirsten. I'm from Boston University. I work totally online with our doctoral program. Uh, I work with teachers such as yourselves. Uh, we have a phenomenal uh, online doctor program. So if you're interested in going past your master's, we will can fit you in very nicely. We also got a six-year diploma. So if you're going 300 credits past, you know, to get a uh, step and grade on the salary scale, uh, you can do that too. So these are both available. If you have any questions on it, you can get back to me at my email. And also uh, you can work through our admission people. Uh, I have set this uh, presentation up uh, so I have a web page for you. It's fredkirsten.com, dell1.html, and I've got my handout up on that for you. So if you want to take the handout, it's very good because it'll give you a lot of addresses and all the stuff that I'm going to talk about. And I've also done a lot of talking about Chromebook in the handout, so material will be very valuable to you. So if you were working on into your other directions. Uh, so I started my presentation, I have called it Chromebook Cloud Inclusion in a Music Classroom. And I'm going to try to give you a lot of things that you can use, especially if you are working now in the virtual situation. Uh, when I started to work with Chromebook, I started this presentation last October, you know, and I looked at 72 different Chromebooks, okay, I nearly got thrown in jail because of this presentation. Because what I do is I go into Walmart, you know, and Best Buy and all these stores, and then I can look at the various Chromebooks and I can look at the QR codes and get in all this information. And so anyway, I was fooling around with the things and looking at the ports on it. Evidently, I pulled out the security port, you know. And so all of a sudden, like a, a bunch of locusts, they all descended upon me, you know, the police and 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 everything. And I had to pull out my ID and show my my uh, ID from New York and all these things because I evidently they thought I was going to hook their Chromebook. Uh, so anyway, so this is a lot of risk when you do a presentation for Delaware. You know, I mean that's the way it goes. Uh, so anyway, uh, I've tried to modify this to try to give you a lot of things that you could be able uh, to share and use with as when you go out of this presentation. So I'm going to try to cover a lot of things today. I'm going to work with cloud tools, talk about the CBs. Uh, I'm going to try to show you opportunities so you can employ with specific subjects, because I know I probably have different people from different areas of music ed. I'm going to talk about notation, audio editing, getting involved with recording, music theory, ear training, video creation, video editing, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about creativity, practice, getting involved with some tools that you can use. And I'm also going to talk about selecting the CB for purchase without getting thrown in jail. Uh, and then a little bit on Google Play. And then I'm going to give you a location library for follow. Get that library because I've given you a lot of information on it. When I started working on this presentation, I was sort of fascinated because uh, I, how Google has taken over the classroom in the last 10 years. And I thought this New York Times article was fascinating because today more than half of the American primary second kids are working with Google Apps. That's 30 million children, folks, and that's a major audience when you start to look at it. And the Chromebooks are now the powerhouse in America's schools because more than half of the mobile devices shipped now to the schools are CBs. And Google is now prioritizing training, as you can probably see. A lot of emphasis on collab, 
You are probably doing a lot of things, obviously, with remote. And folks, there's a lot of money in this because Google is making 30 bucks per device by selling services, not just the machines, but services. So you can imagine multiplying that by the number of kids that are working with CVs in school, that's a lot of money. Uh, there is a concern. If you get somebody going on their operating system early, then there's a potential for life continuation. I think that's not true because I think our kids are so tech savvy. I mean, they're better than I am, okay? I could see over the last 10 years that I've been working online, how the improvements that I have seen, and these kids are going way up. So there's not any potential for life continuation. And when I started to work with this presentation last October, uh, Google was part of Alphabet. And at that time, the, they were worth something like $800 billion. The last time I looked, Google is now worth one trillion bucks. So there's a lot of money on the online business. So I decided to start with notation. And uh, we've all worked with NoteFlight. I don't know how many people have worked with NoteFlight Learn. Okay, new NoteFlight Learn is sort of new. Uh, it's, it's, you can use the NoteFlight free. I've always used the free, okay, <laughs> over the years. Uh, but uh, you can work with NoteFlight Learn and there's all types of new advances I thought really cool that you could work with remotely. For example, the teachers can, can interact and share. You can listen in. Uh, there's all different types of activity templates that are there. There's live audio recording. So if you want to do some assessment of your kids, you know, you're playing back and forth, you want to hear what you, you they can record in, which is really cool and you can assess their direction. They have direct integration with other learning management systems. And I'll show you a couple in a second. Uh, you can listen to their notation or uh, you can see it or uh, you can work with various performance assessments, constantly send comments back and they can send information back to you. They've just come up with what is called sound check. Uh, I know many of you have worked with smart music, yes? Okay, smart music uh, allows you to do some assessment and performing. And, but what you can do with this is really cool because you can provide a rating with a red, yellow, green assessment. So what the kid does, if you look at the Ode to Joy, they can play in and then it will assess their pitch and their intonation and so forth and their correctness of their notes. This is another feature that they have already started to build uh, into this uh, program, which is really cool. If you go with the teaching assessment, you have this fantastic uh, composition library and they can lay in uh, with various styles. They can work with Mozart and Bach and uh, be able to then take some of your files that you want to put in. There's all types of templates there and you can work back and forth and they can be able to make their own compositions and go that direction. So this is something that works very nicely remotely. Anybody work with flat? Okay, flat is new. It's totally in the cloud. I recommend it to you. Uh, it uh, allows the kids, you can have as many kids as you want working with a composition. It's being integrated into Google Classroom. So if you're working with Google Classroom, then you can work with that one. You don't have to go out and all over the place with other things. Uh, you can work with compositions. You can use one-to-one -one Chromebooks if you want. The Fairfield School District is doing something sort of interesting because what they have done is they have built it out so uh, that they have all the grade kids working from sixth grade through 12th grade. So if you'll notice, these are all their compositions on the left-hand side. So then one person in the secondary school can work with somebody in the middle school or the junior school or whatever, which is really very unique. So I opened up my own page, and I think I like this about this. If you work with notation software with kids, if you work with Finale or you work with Sibelius, you know you got to learn that interface, and you got to learn to put all types of notations in. The nice thing about Flat is you do a drag and drop. So you open it up online, they drag in the notation, and uh, then they can be able to do some pretty much good, pretty strong uh, compositions from it. So this is really unique. It's synchronous so they can all work with it at the same time and you get something like this. This is Flat, a powerful music score editor inside your browser. Embrace music creation and bring it to the future. You can drop notes with a click and go further in your melody. 
Even if you lose your network connection, you can keep on working with our offline feature. It will synchronize your scores when you go online again. You can invite your friends to work with your new music sheet and enjoy the real-time improvements that foster the efficiency of your band work. If that's not enough for you, you can start a hangout chat with your collaborators and have fun with them. When your composition is done, share it with the community that gathers more than 300,000 musicians and music lovers. If you start to work with audio, I'm sure you've worked with Audacity online, yes? Okay, Audacity uh, is software you have to download to your machine, but now they have gone up online. It allows you to do all types of audio editing and you can get something that looks like this. You can work with uh, Audacity online if you want. If you'll notice, I've set it up so that I'm accessing the site. And if I want to do some work with audio, I could do the normal editing of the files and builds from there. Big problem of this, sometimes this does run a little bit slow. So this is something to be aware of. Obviously, Audacity is fantastic to be able to work with online, and you can build off it if you want to work with Chrome. And the good thing about it, it's free. Now, you go to a site called Docs. This is a good site to know about because not only do they have Audacity in the cloud, but you can do things with Word. Uh, there is a, a site up for working with audio editing. Uh, there's one that you can work with video editing. It's all up online. Uh, and then they have a second one. There's a video editor. So this is all there. I've given you that location in the handout. Check it out because you can do a lot of things with. Uh, I've been working with the uh, foundation for over 12 years. Uh, it's totally in the cloud. Uh, I like it a lot because it's pretty strong, you know? I mean, some of them are a little weak and you got to work with various types of idiosyncrasies and so forth. You can do all types of automation of volume, panning, tracking. Uh, they've got a built-in library audio. There's reverb in that. And this is what it looks like. It's really nicely laid out, as you can see, uh, to work back and forth. The other nice thing about Soundation is they will work with Google Hangout. So if your kids are then working with Google and you're setting up your programs for them working remotely, you can go into Google and it interfaces quite nicely as you go. Another thing that's up online is pretty simplistic, but it's available. You can merge and edit various types of audio files. Simple and it looks something like this. Hi folks, this is uh, using Audio Joiner, which is sort of an interesting uh, online opportunity to work with audio. It's sort of limited as you'll notice, but uh, you can use it on the Chromebook and certainly it is up online and freebie. So what you can do then, if you want to put together a couple clips, for example, I've just got an audio clip open and I'm going to join them as you can see in just a second uh, so that what I can do is put the two clips up on line and then it will cross fade. And, and so then what you can do is uh, you can uh, cross fade and export out and you'll notice there are all different types of formats you can use, MP3, uh, WAV and M4A and so forth. Pretty simple, but you can do something that works quite nicely with that. How many people use Soundtrap? Okay, Soundtrap is the one that everybody, yeah, everybody's working with that. It's really good, okay? Uh, it's an online uh, music recording studio. Uh, it's similar to GarageBand. Everybody's worked with GarageBand, I'm sure, okay? Uh, similar to GarageBand, easier to work with. The nice thing about it is you can do world collab, if you will. You can work off any device at the same time, okay? You can work off your cell phone, your computer, uh, your Chromebook, whatever else. So uh, this is the page that I have for it. Uh, it's really nice because it's got a lot of tutorials there on digital audio. And they're good for working with young kids because they can start to learn about the waveforms and that. And then they can get these little uh, uh, awards, you know, you can get a little cup on that as you complete the thing. But if you notice when I start with my page, I can start a collaboration. 
I've got all my projects laid out in there. And then I can go invite friends into the project. Okay. I can work with Facebook, Twitter, or any types of things and build with people in. And then what I can do is I can go to specific genres. For example, let's say I wanted to work with guitar. Okay. I can become, uh, find out who can give me types of, of workings that they would like to work back and forth on guitar. And then I could go to a hot icon and I can click on that and hear exactly how that person type is playing. I mentioned you can go back and forth uh, with uh, Soundtrap and Note Flight uh, in terms of interaction. John Malinczak, who's past president of TIME and managing director of Note Flight, I think he's doing some sessions today, uh, is showing you how you can collab back and forth. So what you can do is go from Note Flight to Soundtrap, which is really fantastic because there's so many possibilities. You can see your soundtrack song in note flight notation, and then players can be able to perform with that. Or you can remix the audio of your note flight score with soundtrack instruments. Or you can export out drum parts uh, into soundtrack into note flight, and then you can copy them into your score. And you can add soundtrack loops into the playback of the note flight uh, melody. So there's all these wonderful possibilities to go back and forth to make the compositions uh, so uh, good. So what I wanted to do for you today was to show you a project that you could work with soundtrack. You could work it with younger children. I would say probably uh, middle school on up are working with it. Uh, the, what you could do then is uh, have them collaborate on a composition. So I had my students do it. My students are just teachers like you, obviously. And uh, but what they had to do was they had to take uh, and make a two-minute composition. They had to work with four and five different people, and they had to use all the various features of soundtracks. Easy to do. And uh, so one of my students combined banjo with hip hop beats, which I thought was sort of wild, you know. Uh, and uh, he worked with another student who recorded in a banzuri flute obligato. And then another student added a synth loop into the end of the thing. And then they, another student added the various bass and drum loops that were available in the library. They recorded in a voice line from the Loopmaster's free sample pap of old movie dialogues. If you're making compositions, be aware of this. I'll give you that in your handout. And then they tweaked it with the audio and they added a banjo part and they got what they called the banjo hip hop subconscious. And it sounds like this. Get to me in a dream, like a subconscious impulse. I can see it right in front of me. So now you can see it, you can see all the advantages you can do if you want to build it in. Okay, you can say it's simplistic if you want. Recording. Uh, I work on my CB uh, with a uh, uh, site called Twisted Wave. It is an app for working with the iPad. It has now gone online. It's phenomenal. It really is great. Because with Twisted Wave, you can work very simplistically in the cloud. You notice that I've done some editing. I can pull in as many waves as I want. I can do all types of editing, use very effects, and get something like this. Twisted Wave is really a unique opportunity to work online. You can work with it, your Chromebook. You can then be able to work with all different types of audio editing, just as you work with professional DAW software. So I'm going to drop in a file, and you can see what it looks like uh, as it opens up.
And then you have all different types of opportunities. You can send it right on to Google Drive, which is really fantastic. You can do all different types of editing. You can select the various aspects working within the uh, file itself. You can lay in markers. You can do all types of audio effects that are all there. You can then do some editing out and then be able to do cutting. And then you can loop from there if you want to go. So it's a very fantastic thing to be able to work with Chromebook, and I commend it to you. And so super because you can work up online. To get about with music theory, uh, I recommend Teoria, especially if you are working with older students. You can get about with all the jazz chords and uh, some of the uh, other uh, the music theory things you cannot. Uh, but it is there and is really super to be able to work with. For younger kids, be aware of Hookpad, another online opportunity which is really unique because they can get about with hearing chord progressions. They can build in all types of things with lyrics. Uh, Andrew, have you worked with that? Yeah, that's cool, isn't it? Okay, it looks like this, folks. An example of hook pad, which is sort of interesting, if you notice, you could lay in various chords if you want, so I'll play them through. And then if I wanted to add additional chords, I could do so. I'll go to a five, and let's go to a one. And you can follow the same procedure if you want. You can involve with adding notes, or you can work with various aspects of the scale. Are there all different types of features? You can loop if you want. You can play. You can record. There's a band feature that uh, will allow you to work with various instruments that are there and change tempo and so forth. And you can add lyrics. So uh, Hookpad is really very unique. You can use it online with Chrome. As you get about with ear training, uh, you can work with another site that's good for working with young kids. And actually, you can work through secondary. It's called Music Notation Training. Uh, they can do a note identification if they are a younger age, or you can get involved with interval identification if you are trying to do some ear training. Music Notation Training allows you to work with single notes online. As you can see, I can be able to then put in the notes as I wish, and a G, and a C, and so forth. And then if you wish, you could also work with chords so that you could be able to identify these chords that are up an E minor and so forth. So this is available to you in both free and then obviously uh, the pro version where you have to spend some money. We're just becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, uh, Aurelia and Musician are both online now, very important thing to be working. I wanna show you some curriculum presentation tools. You've gotta make PowerPoints, uh, you've got to uh, work with uh, the various MPEG-4 videos and so forth. If you go with Chrome, uh, when you open it up to the Chrome launcher, you're going to work with slides. Everybody work with slides in here yet? Okay, yeah, uh, slides is really good. Uh, and uh, it's uh, similar, the interface is similar to working with uh, PowerPoint, so there's no problem. The nice thing about it, you stay totally in the system, okay, which is really great. And you get something like this. This is just a fast little video on slides. Obviously, this is available uh, through Google. Uh, it works out pretty much just like working with PowerPoints. So you'll notice I've just put in three or four slides, as you can see. I can then go into present mode if I want. I can start my presentation. And it's really a neatest down there. I love the little pointer. You know, to see how the pointer sort of slips around the screen. And then you can go through your presentation. I decided to show you some of my caladiums that I grow during the summer. So you can see how these slides can be built. How many people have worked Powtoon? Okay, Powtoon is interesting. Uh, first of all, the interface again, PowerPoint, okay, on the left hand side, as you can see. Uh, it's pretty powerful. You can lay in a voice line, you can bring in audio lines, or you can bring in JPEGs or GIFs or whatever. They have all different types of little objects that you can build in. They say they're totally synchronous, they're not. Okay, they are uh, asynchronous, unfortunately. Uh, but the nice thing about it is you can export out as PowerPoint and also as MPEG-4 video. So one of my students uh, decided to show the, how this would work. And what she did is she worked with a commercial. 
If you're working with a technology with your kids, you can make a commercial as part of a project. And you can do this from grade seven on up. I actually have seen it done with earlier. The, so the kids write out, uh, they'll take a product, okay, or an object or whatever else. And uh, my student used iReal Pro. She's a teacher. Uh, and she's using that app with her kids. And so uh, what she did was uh, one of the kids developed the script and then some of the other kids uh, did the audio and the video and they brought on the thing and they sequenced it out. And so you can see what you could do with Powtoon and they came up with this, which I think is sort of amusing. This is Nikki. She plays guitar in her school's jazz band but doesn't like practicing all by herself at home. Isn't it frustrating when you want to play with a group, but you can't? Wouldn't it be great to have the entire jazz band at home with you anytime you wanted to practice? Your parents wouldn't like that, though, because they'd have to clear out the whole living room, buy a bunch of pizzas to feed them all, and warn the neighbors. <laughs> but there is an easier solution. iRealPro. With iRealPro, Nikki can play along with a real jazz band that takes up no floor space and doesn't eat anything. Nikki can either import charts from iRealPro's forms or compose her own. Simply tap the pencil icon to begin creating your own score. Use the pop-up keyboard to enter your chord symbols, beat marks, and other symbols needed. Don't want a jazz bossa nova groove? Tap it to select from the dozens of other groovy grooves available. Hate playing with lots of flats? Tap the treble clef and D flat in the bottom right corner and choose your key. Want to take some solos? Tap the three X at the bottom of the screen and select the number of repetitions you want. Once your score is just the way you like it, grab your instrument, tap the play button, and start jamming. Tap tutorials to learn how to share your work with others in iRealPro's forums. To get iRealPro for your iPad, go to the App Store. It's only $12.99, much less than the cost of So our direction is not to sell this to you, you know? I mean, it's good. It really is good. I use it on my iPad. But uh, see what she did with her kids. Okay, which I think is fantastic because they had a really opportunity to put it together. Canva is a opportunity to work with for new slides. A lot of different things is becoming stronger as it goes. How many people work Flipgrid? Yeah, uh, good, great. Uh, Flipgrid is developed at the University of Minnesota. Great way to communicate back. It's a private asynchronous video communication source. Uh, you can work with text, you could go video. Uh, you can lay out a grid. A grid is nothing more than a communication line between one kid and another a group of kids. And you can do something like this. I'm going to click on my class here. And then here is the question that I posed to my students. So we'll take a look at this. And here is the link to that specific question. So I'm going to click on that so you can see what my students saw. Um, here is the question. Watch the following video and comments. So this was a YouTube video that I shared that had just come out from Khan Academy about learning. So this was an intro to discussion uh, board type of question. And I wanted students to uh, respond either here within, um, within Flipgrid or I wanted them to respond in the discussion board. And so some of them chose to do that. You can see what the question was here as well. So let me hop back to this real quick. And this is an example of what a student response would look like. I believe that I am a hands-on learner and a visual learner. So basically, you can use it as a communication board between all uh, that and any of your kids. I wanted to talk a lot about video creation, and actually you've seen a lot of the things that I'm doing, uh, and talk about some of the things that are available in the cloud. Screencastify is there. It's simplistic. It works very nice. Anybody work it? Okay, uh, it's there for, oh, okay, great, Fred. Uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, how do you like it? Sorry, I had to mute myself. Uh, it's actually great. Our district uh, purchased us the real version. Oh, yeah. Which, which gives you more than five minutes a shot. No, it slices, it dices, and is, in fact, the best thing since sliced bread. Everyone oh, in our district uses it. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's good. It's very good. I think you can work with it quite nicely. There's also we video that's out there. Uh, uh, the loom loom is another one that's there that you can work with. That one's a freebie. I've done a number of the videos you've seen today. And by the way, I did them all on my Chromebook. Okay. So, uh, I want to be, uh, as honest as I could with it. Uh, screencast-o-matic 
is also available to you. And I'm bringing this in for a reason because I want to show you a file format. Hi, folks. I am working with Screenomatic. So you can see how it works. It's really a pretty cool uh, sharing opportunity for sharing the screen of your video. So I'll go into MSM and see what's going on today. Uh, you can see I haven't shaved today. Uh, but you can do all different types of opportunities with this uh, to be able to make now, screen video. Now, I bring this up because I want to add your technology expertise for today, okay? Uh, the no direction is WebM files. Okay, WebM is compatible uh, when working with HTML5, which is a new direction with the web pages that are being developed. But WebM is a new file format. I started playing with it three years ago, okay, when I was doing some things for ATMI. Uh, it's a new file format to export out. Uh, it, uh, it, I don't want to get all the techno trivia, but as it used to be with the MP4, you export out as using an algorithm called H264. Okay, we are now working what's called VP8 for WebM. The nice thing about WebM is 47% smaller in size than MP4, okay? Which means that you're now playing, all you guys are working with videos, so you know that you've got these humongous files, right? Okay, that you gotta got, megs and gigs and the whole bank. Uh, so anyway, uh, the new direction is coming out of WebM as you start to work with Screencast-O-Matic. A big problem that's starting to happen you'll run into because WebM is not accepted in some of the situations with your more expensive uh, video editing. So what you've got to do is you've got to go from WebM to MPEG-4 to be able to get those files to be able to edit out. Now, there are a couple sites. Uh, video Converter is available, which will allow you to change the file format, and also a simplistic one called Online Video Cutter. Online Video Cutter allows you to be able to edit and work with WebM files. As yet, there is not uh, an awful lot of uh, software that's available to work with WebM in terms of editing. But as you can see, I can then start my file. Hi, folks. I am working with Screenomatic. So you can see how it works. It's really a pretty cool. And I can very simply be able to change the ends on the file or be able to do some small editing in the middle. As you can see, I can flip it around and so forth and so forth. So this is something that is available online to you as you start to work with WebM. Now, one thing you can do is, and I didn't want to overdo this because I wanted to stay with the Chromebook in the cloud. There's a Mac X Video Converter Pro goes around 30 bucks. Okay, it does all different types of editing back and forth if you want, conversion. Okay, I got to add to your techno trivia background for the day, MPEG. You've all heard MPEG, right? Motion MP MP2, MP3, all those things. And this is MPEG, okay? The MPEG is the Motion Picture Expert Group. They meet uh, nine, 10 times a year, and they come up with the file formats that are used worldwide. So the next time you think of MPEG, you know, uh, it's not just a file name. This is an actual group of individuals who work with it. So it's sort of fascinating to get into technology. So selecting the CB for purchase, so what you could look for. I think that I want my kids to know about CBs because they are their generation. All right. And there's a lot of things that you should know, especially if you're going to buy it. So what I decided to do, I set myself a amount of 250 bucks and uh, I looked at 72 of them. All right. Uh, so let me see, share you some of the things that I've given you more information in your handout on these because I got other things I want to show you that will help you with uh, uh, online work. Uh, Mary Mary storage, you're probably going to get 64 uh, uh, gigs of solid state. Uh, your RAM is going to get four Gs. Uh, you try to get eight Gs if you can. Uh, you look for ports. You want a USB-C, which is the newest version. You want a USB-3, which is now called a USB-3A, and you want a micro SD. I'll show you why in a second. I find that I can run Google Chrome very nicely on four gigs of RAM. Okay, it runs very fast on my machine. And my machine has a limited processor. 
because I didn't overspend <laughs> when I bought the damn thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, the uh, size and weight, as you start to work with kids, look at what they're going to do, because these kids are now carrying these things almost all the time back and forth, especially in our area on the buses, because the school districts are buying them, and each kid has one to flip home with, okay? Uh, look for durability, ruggedness. Uh, I found that the key quality on some of mine were pretty tacky. Okay, especially you're not going to get any backlit keys, all right? Uh, but you're going to find that some of them can, this can be a nuisance. As you start to work with Chrome, you'll hear the term Linux, okay? Linux is a type of operating system that the Chromebook will go into. Right now, they are talking about it. They've been talking about it at least since I've been in technology for over 20 years. But uh, it has not done well with audio. So you'll see that as you start to work with it. High-end machines, you could go a Google Pixel book for 1200 bucks, or then you get an i7, all the bells and whistles, all types of RAM and so forth. Or you can go low-end, uh, four gigs uh, on an Asus uh, Intel Celeron. As you start to get involved with your machine, you want an external hard drive. How many people got a Chromebook in here? Okay, if you go a Chromebook, you want an extra drive because they have very limited space. I bought a USB type C because it's faster. Uh, type of I used the sand disk, if you will, but what I've got had 250 gigs of uh, space to my machine, which is fantastic because then I don't have to play Dropbox games, you know, and that I could take my uh, my uh, USB C port and go from one machine to another, which is good. If you look, you want to get 150 megabits read speed. You want as fast to read speed as possible because I will do presentations off my Chromebook and I can take all my videos, put them on one of these cards and run them, okay, right away. If your speed is slow on the thing, the thing will hesitate for you. If you get a micro SD card, uh, you want a type 10. Don't get a type three. If you get the type 10, you'll find that it will be fast and it will be running for you. So this is something to look at and expand your size. Selecting apps. Music apps, great. You could go with the Google Play Store and there's a lot of great things that are available for you. Google Play provides a lot of opportunities for music apps. There's FL Studio Mobile, there's BandPass, you can work with SongMaker, BandLab is awesome. Uh, be able to work with recording studio is there, a music studio soundtrack, obviously, and there's various other ones that are there. So if you are looking for music apps to be able to work with your Chromebook, certainly go to Google Play, and I've given you the URL that you can follow up on. And also uh, look at uh, the Chrome Web Store because they have fantastic things. I got my xylophone that I'm using on my Chromebook. It's really fun. I mean, I have a blast with the thing. Okay, annoy the lady upstairs, but uh, uh, the, xyl <laughs> the xyl xylophone uh, is a lot of fun to play. I, mean, I love to play these virtual instruments on my CB, you know, and it's sort of crazy. Uh, I've given you two sites to look at, EdTech and Mobile Learning, because they go to 10 important things you should know about your Chromebook. And I, my feeling is the more, that's why I sort of hit you with the techno trivia today. Okay, I think that sometimes we get away from knowing our machines. And it's great to know you can share it with your parents and also with your kids, because they get a chance to know the things about their machine. There's also 13 must-have Chrome apps for music teachers. I've shown you one already, okay? Music notation training, so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, there's also UJAM, uh, there's Audio Sauna, and there's a fantastic one called Audio Tool for doing audio editing. So those are also available as you go. How many people have worked with Chrome Music Lab? Uh, good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then I, I've got, got pros behind me now, okay? So I show this, keep you guys awake, you know? I mean, eight o'clock in the morning, this is a pretty early one. Uh, but anyway, you can do a lot of things with creativity, especially for working with young kids. Chrome Music Lab, you can see there are all different types of opportunities. So let's just select one, run for rhythm. And you will notice as it opens up that we will be able to see the various aspects of percussion that are available. 
see, so you can then click on these things if you want to build them, and then you can build various types of uh, rhythms that you can make if you want. And uh, you can use other different types of instruments, as you can see. Let's just give you another example of what you can do. I sort of like working with the arpeggios. Uh, you can see exactly this opens up. You can get all different types of chord sequences if you want. As you can see, you can change these if you want, and program these out if you want to go that route. Uh, as you start to get involved with practice, there's a lot of things, smart music you've worked with, I'm sure, uh, now uh, working with Soundcheck. Uh, there's a fantastic opportunity online uh, for music prodigy. If you're, anybody a guitar person in here? Okay, with guitar, especially secondary school kids or guitar, uh, there's some, sometimes that we forget a little bit about them, but if you want to go specialize, they have a fantastic opportunity to work with red, green, and uh, uh, yellow. Hi, I'm Mike, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Music Prodigy to track my students' progress. Uh, first, they will click on Classes to view all the classes that have been shared with them. Uh, let's use Scales for Guitar as an example. And let's go down to whole tune. And here they can preview the sheet music and hit play to play the music. So here it will track their performance with red note, green note feedback in real time, tracking their rhythm and their pitch. There are two modes, assessment mode, which only gives you a metronome and record your audio, and the tempo is fixed. In practice mode, they can hear a reference track of the part or they can hear an accompaniment, they can do loop, they can change the tempo, and uh, lot, lots of options here in practice mode. Let's go ahead and go back to assessment mode and play through the piece. All right, so it tracked about 95% of it. And uh, let's go ahead and save the score. Now you can view the report of your performance. And you can compare it also to an audio file in case there's any discrepancies. Here's, let's check out how the report looks. So it has some info on it at the top, and then if you scroll down, you can look note for note and how you did. Which I think is really cool. So I've given you a library of information uh, one of the things I wanted to mention on you is Google Music Play Library. You can pull in 50,000 songs. So you can use that on Google for audio if you want. Uh, if you look at your handout, you'll see I've given you a lot of information uh, that's available. I want to just mention two sources that I love very much. Katie Wardrobe. How many people work with Katie? Uh, Katie Wardrobe has got fantastic, uh, and they're free, okay, she's has, you can buy their service, obviously, with Midnight Music, but uh, you, if you stay for the free, she's got phenomenal things up online, uh, she's got some stuff up on Chromebooks, and she does the periodic once a month a, a webinar, uh, which you can go, she pulls in about 2,000 people by the way, okay, so you get there early, but she's got great ideas to be able to work with. Another site's fantastic, Amy Burns. Uh, Amy is uh, past president of uh, uh, TIME. Uh, she teaches uh, K through eight uh, instrumental and vocal in New Jersey. And so what she does is so super because she's a practicing music teacher. So what she talks about technology isn't pie in the sky. Okay, it really works. And she's got a lot of good things up on Chromebook and you can build for that information if you want there. So uh, I've given you a lot of information for you on the handout. My webpage is up for this presentation uh, if you want to follow up on it. Communicate back with me. It's Fred Kirsten at fredkirsten.com. And uh, anything I can help you with technology-wise or uh, whatever, I'll be certainly get back to you.